Hello again and welcome back to our course on Access 2019. In this module we're going to take a look at the Access workspace and we're also going to delve into the backstage area. And really the aim of this module is really just to give you a tour around the Access workspace and get you familiar with some of the features and functionality. Now we're starting off again back at our start screen, you should be reasonably familiar with this now. And if you look at what we're looking at here, so underneath recent, our list of databases is getting ever longer. Each time we go in, we have a new database that we've created listed there. And eventually this list will start to get so long that databases will drop off the bottom of that list. So it will be a little bit harder for you to find recently used databases. Now, one way that you can get around that, and I did mention this in an earlier module, is to pin databases that you use frequently. So, for example, if I hover over Esprit de Tour, you can see that I get this little pin icon. If I hover over, it says pin this item to the list. Now, I'm not going to do that at this moment, but if I was to do that, what would happen is that Esprit de Tour would then always be available underneath this pinned tab just here. So again, it's just a really quick way of being able to access those databases you use frequently so that they don't drop off the bottom of the list. Now, what we're actually going to do first is that we're going to go back into our contacts database. So I'm going to double click to open contacts. Again, I'm going to close down this welcome screen and we're just going to do a quick tour of some of the main features of the workspace, just in case you're not familiar with them. Now, I will say that if you are very familiar with Microsoft products, so maybe something like Excel or Word or PowerPoint, particularly in the later versions, 2016, 2019, even 2013, then you might be able to skip over this module. If you're not familiar with those versions, or if you just like a refresher, then stick with me because that's what we're going to go through now. So starting at the top here, we have what we call a ribbon and ribbons are organized onto different tabs. So you can see here, I currently have the home tab selected. We have a create tab. We have an external data tab, database tools and help. So each of these tabs contains what we call a ribbon and a ribbon is this list of commands or different groups of commands running horizontally across the top of your workspace. And these tabs will change depending on what exactly it is that you're doing at any given time. So we do have something called contextual tabs or contextual ribbons. And those are ribbons which only appear when they are needed. So if I'm doing something to do with a table, it might be that I get at the top here a table tools ribbon, which I can't currently see because I don't need it. So just be aware of that. These tabs aren't fixed. They will change depending on what it is that you're doing. But these ones you can see now are the standard tabs for access. And on each tab, we have groups. And within those groups, we have commands. Something else we also have is if you glance above those tabs, we have something called the quick access toolbar. And it's right here, right in the top left hand corner. And currently when I hover over my quick access toolbar, I can see a save icon. I can see undo and I can see redo. And I also have a little drop down up here, which will allow me to customize that quick access toolbar. Now, the quick access toolbar will either be right at the top of the screen or if you prefer, you can display it underneath your ribbon. And I actually prefer to have it underneath the ribbon. So I'm going to select show below the ribbon to move it down here. I just find that's a little bit easier for me to see. Now, what the quick access toolbar is, is it's somewhere where you can add commands that you use frequently so that they're easy to access. So you're not hunting around through the different tabs and ribbons for a particular command. And you can customize this until your heart's content and you can access pretty much every single command that's available in access to add it to your quick access toolbar. And I'm really going to cover how you can customize this quick access toolbar in a later module. So just hold that thought for now. Let's jump right down to the bottom. So right down here, we have what we call our status bar. And this status bar can also be customized. So if I right click my mouse on the status bar, you'll see that I have lots and lots of different things ticked. And this is really informational for you. So for example, I've got caps lock ticked. 
which means that when I turn my caps lock on, you can see in the status bar, it tells me that I have caps lock on. So that can be really very useful. I'm just gonna turn my caps lock off and you'll see that that disappears. So there's lots of pieces of information that you can choose to display in that status bar at the bottom, just by either checking or unchecking in that customized status bar menu. Now let's move on to this navigation panel that we have running down the left hand side. This is really what we call the nerve center of our database. It basically lists all of the objects that are available in your database and you can see that they're categorized. We have tables, queries, forms, reports, macros and modules. And these can be collapsed or expanded to see the information. So if you have quite a lot of information in this panel and you're only particularly interested in tables, you could collapse up all of the others just to make it a little bit easier for you to see. So you have those little chevrons in order to be able to do that. So these chevrons to collapse and expand particularly come into their own if you have a very large complex database where you might have hundreds and hundreds of objects. Now, most of the time, this navigation pane will be open, but if it's becoming a nuisance or you don't have any need for it at a particular time, you can click on the little chevrons at the top here just to kind of minimize that. It doesn't close it. You can still see navigation pane just there. And of course, you can click on those chevrons again to bring that navigation pane back. You can also change the width of it. So if I hover my mouse just over that divider, I can drag it out or I can drag it back in again. What you also have in here is a little search box. So it might be that you need to maybe search for a form or a report or a query, and you can do that just using this search facility at the top. So you can type in your search criteria, click on the magnifying glass, and it will find it in your navigation pane. And another thing you have in this navigation pane is this little drop down arrow. If I click it, it gives you a number of other options to help you find and deal with objects. Now in the main window that you can see, we have our contact list. And this looks a little bit like an Excel spreadsheet. It's not in fact a table, it is actually what we would call a form. And if you look in the navigation pane, we have contact list just here, which is what we're currently looking at. And in the contacts list, each row represents one line of data. So essentially, each contact that we add will occupy a row. Now the other forms that we have here, welcome, that controls the welcome screen that comes up whenever we reopen our access database. And we're gonna take a quick look at contact details. Now to open this form, if I right click on it, and I can select open. Now, alternatively, I could have just double clicked and that would also open the contact details form. So what this shows is all of the detail for one contact on one form. So you might use something like this in something like an application where you're gonna ask someone to update their contact details. Now, both the contact list and the contact details are forms, but they're very different types of forms. You can see that when I open this contact details, it kind of opens in a new window and it looks like it's hovering over the top. So let me just close that down. And apart from opening a form, there are other options that you can go into. So for example, if I right click again on contact details, I have the option of going into design view. And you can see straight away that this is a very different thing altogether. This is where I could go in to design that particular form so I can make changes to it essentially. So if I wanted to, I could go in and I could do things like uh, grab this little section here and I could move it around so I can just pick it up and I can drag it down and drop it so I can really change the design of that particular form. So forms are very different when you're in design mode to a form in what we call open mode or run mode. Now once I've made my changes to my form and I'm happy with it, I can then close this form down by clicking on that little cross in the top right hand corner. And of course it's going to ask me if I want to save the changes to the design of my form contact details. Now in this case I'm going to say no. I'm just going to close out of that. 
So the point I'm trying to make here is that sometimes we'll open forms to use them to add information into our database and sometimes we'll open them in design mode. So now I'm back to my contact list and again I'm going to very quickly just close contact list down. I'm going to click on the contact list form in the navigation pane. I'm going to right click and jump into that design view again. And again, you can see here, I can go in and I can make some changes to the actual design of that form. Let's close that down. Now, everything I've said there with regards to design view is equally true of all of the other objects. So it's true of reports. You can run or change the design of some reports. The same for queries, macros and tables. And we're going to look at all of those throughout this course. So let's move on now back to having a tour of our workspace. So we were looking at the ribbon tabs earlier, which we have running across the top. And to the left, you'll see that there is a tab that says file. Now, this isn't actually a ribbon, essentially. If we click on file, it takes us into what we call the backstage area. And this is where you'll find a lot of your what we would call administration tasks for your database. So we've already explored home, new and open previously. We're now in the info tab and we're going to go into some of the options which we have in info a little bit later on. We have save as again, that's something that we've already utilized. We have print, which will allow us to print our database, select a printer or even print preview our database before we print it. And we have a close option. As we saw before, that will close down your current database. It won't close down access. And then right at the bottom, we have an account option. And this shows which account is currently being used for this copy of Access 2019. And it also shows me that I have OneDrive connected just here. On the right hand side, I have office updates and it's always really important to make sure that your copy of access is always up to date. So just be aware of that. And I can also do things in here, some more fun things like change my office background. I have numerous different things I could select and I could also change my office theme. So currently I have colorful, but I could go for dark gray if I wanted a completely different look. We also have black and that one is new for 2019 and we have white. So again, that's really personal preference. We then have a feedback tab, which will allow you to send either good, bad or suggestions to Microsoft. And then finally at the bottom, we have an options area and options is made up of a number of different pages with settings that make your copy of access work as you like it. And we're going to talk a lot more and explore some of these options later on. There's a whole host of features in here, which will really allow you to set up access in a way that works for you. So we're going to come back to that a bit later. So that is the end of this section. In the next section, we're going to talk a little bit about online help and the new tell me feature. So please join me for that. If you're not a subscriber, Click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get a free Microsoft Access 2019 course, including downloadable exercise files, click over there. And click over there to watch all the videos in this Access 2019 playlist.